Hi everybody, Bearded Tinker here. So, I just came back from vacation, actually a couple of weeks ago, and my home assistant decided to welcome me back with the chaos. And by the chaos, I really mean, well, 40 plus updates waiting for me. Hex integrations, add-ons, firmware updates, even Zigbee and Matter. Some repositories have been abandoned while I was away, and of course, we also have additional problems such as Jellyfin. Jellyfin decided to kick me out with an expired authentication token. So, thank you, Jellyfin. Now, I could do this the sensible way. Backup, staged updates, reading change logs, making sure nothing breaks. Or, I could just click on update all and pray that my smart home doesn't collapse in front of me. Today, we are doing a mix of both. I'll show you the right way to handle the neglected home assistant setup, but I'll also push things a little bit to see just how bad it gets if you let your system fall behind. So, let's dive in and hopefully not destroy my home assistant yellow. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As you can see, it's not pretty. Everything from the cards like Mushroom, Bubbles, Apex Charts to utilities like Power Calc to a local all want update. And then there is this, simple thermostat, one of the things that is gone, abandoned. Same for a couple of others. That's the risk when using custom repositories. If the maintainer stops, the integration also stops. This is why you shouldn't just install every shiny thing in Hex. Yes, I'm looking at you or me from six months ago. And here is the Jellyfin asking for re-authentication. Nothing major, but it's another reminder that stuff breaks while you are not looking. Ok, let's talk about strategy. If you are ever in this situation, here is what you should do. Take a full backup. Go to Backups, Backup Now, Manual Backup and tick all you want to do snapshot off. Home Assistant Settings, History, Media if you want, but remember this will create a very large backup file, share folder and select add-ons. I will be doing a full backup. Give backup a name, before all updates in my case, select location where you want to save the backup, in my case this is all 5 locations, and they are this system, Synology, Home Assistant Cloud, Google Drive and also Synology DSM. Click on next and click on create backup. This will of course take some time, so don't rush, just wait for backup to finish. The next step for us is to start small. Update hex components first. They are usually safe and very easy to roll back. Move then to add-ons and firmers. These are the riskier because they can break your Zigbee, Z-Wave or even create boot issues if something goes wrong. That should be the responsible way, but of course I might ignore all of my own advices in just 5 minutes. So let's get started with the updates. I'll start with the Hux components, you can for example start with the cards because they do not require updates. But there are also some things that you should be careful of, even when installing Hex components. For example, if you look at LLM Vision and also LLM Vision Card, these two are usually combined together. So for example, if I were to install this card, some of the updates require you to previously install the component itself or integration. That's why you should be careful and read each and every release note, especially if you see some kind of a warning that something will break. There are also some components that we will be installing much later than you would expect. For example, we have Home Assistant Voice, which is the preview edition voice device, and we also have ESP Home Device Builder. So there is no reason for me to update Home Assistant Voice PE, because later we'll be installing the ESP Home Device Builder 2025.9.1. That means that after this, I would need once again to update the PE. So you should also be aware of that. Now let's continue with other hex components that will require us to do the update. These are the tricky ones. Usually, if you do not have more than one or two, what you should do is 
update each one, restart Home Assistant and see if the things are working. But there is no way for me to install 20 updates and restart Home Assistant 20 times, so we will be taking a gamble here. And that's it, now we have updated almost all hex components. There is one that I haven't updated, this one here, but this is topic for a little bit later down in the video. So what should be the next step? The next step is of course restart your home assistant. Developer tools, restart, restart home assistant. This will make sure that we know that our home assistant is working after all of the hex updates. If something fails, we can revert. If not, you could potentially do once again backup of your system with all of the updated hex components and then continue with the other updates. These will be add-ons, firmwares and similar things. Our Home Assistant is restarting, so what we could do is go to Overview and check if, for example, we have any issues with any of the dashboards in our system. So far, mostly everything looks ok, except the AccuWeather, but that's topic for a separate video. Now it's time for the next step. Go to Settings, Show all updates, and let's do updates of the add-ons. We'll start and do one by one. For each of the updates, you of course can select and choose if you want to do a backup, for example, from this 2102 to 2103 version or you can disable it. By default, I leave everything always to do backup. Let's wait for Home Assistant to finish startup, because the update at this point would not work. And now that Home Assistant has restarted, let's click on update. But also you should note one thing. If you have multiple add-ons that you want to update, and you select that you want to do backup of each and every component, you cannot start at the same time more than one update of the add-ons at least not until the first one has finished with the backup. If you try that, it will say that it cannot do backup and it will fail. But then again, also my recommendation for the add-ons is do one by one. Wait for the first one to finish, then go to the next one. It may take a bit longer, but this is to ensure that everything falls nicely into your system. more or less all the add-ons have been updated, except this one here. These two I grouped in a separate category because these two also risk that we lose access to some other external devices, such as for example Z-Wave devices or Zigbee devices. Make sure that you have also backup of your Z-Wave and also your Zigbee to MQTT. Click on it, read what's happening. For example, I have to jump from version 0.20.0 to version 0.23.0. This is the component itself, it's not a firmware for the controller, it's not firmware for devices, but this still may have impact on your network. So read all of the changes, if there are any kind of issues, and then click on update. And the last one is Zigbee to MQTT. We are jumping from version 2.6.0-1 to 2.6.1-1. This is actually a September release of Zigbee to MQTT. For the changes, you have to click on a link, 
and the link will open or pop up the window where you can read all the changes in the Zigbee2 MQTT. If you are satisfied, just click on update. It looks like our system is still alive, but in order for you to be sure, click on the specific add-on to check if everything is working. Also, you can click on the settings and see if you have any additional repairs and also click on notifications to make sure that you do not have any errors here. If you want to be diligent, go to settings, system and also check the log files. Ok, now we have 3 repairs in the hacks and also 3 updates. In regard to uptime Kuma, there are 2 options for me. I can either click on the link and update it, but as you can see, this component has said bye bye to us because the internal Home Assistant integration has implemented all of the things that the custom component had. So, in order for us to fix it, we can update or we can do following. Go to the hex, click on it, three dots, and remove. But unless you have already removed the integration, you will not be able to remove it. So let's click on navigate, go to Home Assistant integration page, click on uptime Kuma, and delete it here. Delete. And after you have made sure that there is no integration installed and no entities are tied to this integration, go back to Hex, click on Uptime Kuma, three dots, and click on Remove. This will remove this integration and it will also fix one of the errors. We now have two repairs and also two updates. Next, let's check what else has been removed. One thing is a simple thermostat and the other one should be Hess Agent. By the way, Hess Agent is still very much alive, but not through this repository. If you are interested in me doing one another video about the Hess Agent, I did a video about 3, 4, 5 years ago, I can do that. This is a very nice integration, but this one has been removed. So once again, click on X, go to Hex, type in Hess, click on Hess Agent, three dots and remove. Once again, we need to remove it from the integrations page, click on navigate, click on Hass agent, delete and delete each of the integration entities. Go back to hex, Hass agent, three dots and remove. Click on it. And I'll repeat this for the simple thermostat. We now have only two things to do. Home Assistant Yellow, new Ambernet Zigbee firmware. And also the last thing we should do is fix this old version of Home Assistant Voice PE firmware. Let's start with the Yellow update. We are updating from 7.4.4.1 to 7.4.4.2. If you want, you can read the release notes, click on it, and it should pop up in the separate window. When you're satisfied, click on update. We have a bit different screen because this is Home Assistant Yellow Radio Fervor Update. Yep, but unfortunately I have issue failed to perform the action update install. Failed to install the firmware. The reason is that it detected that I have multi-protocol firmware. Actually I do not have, but this is something that I will have to play with. And the last step to have everything up to date in my system is to click on Home Assistant Voice and do the update of the firmware there. And that's it, the system survived the update apocalypse. 40 plus updates, a couple of abandoned repos, one re-login and the firmware update that had me sweating bullets. But everything is still running. By the way, if you wonder how I fixed the ZHA or yellow firmware update, there is a little trick, if it fails for some reason, then you are probably doing the same mistake as me. You should go to integrations and make sure that you have disabled the integration itself. After the firmware update is finished, just enable it and you will be running ZHA with the latest firmware on your Home Assistant Yellow. So overall, not bad for a month of neglect. What's the lesson here? If you keep your system updated regularly, you'll avoid these kinds of marathons. 
but if life happens and you fall behind, don't panic. Just back up, update in stages and you should be fine. Do you update your Home Assistant setup every week? Or do you wait and roll the dice like I just did? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you found this funny or useful, hit the like, subscribe and I'll see you the next time. Before I end up the video, I want to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.